Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from e Got Tech. I know I owe you guys this video for quite some time and happy to say that I've finally set aside some time to perform the heat and thermal throttling test on the Red Magic 6S Pro. Based on my previous test, the Red Magic 6 Pro still actually runs a lot cooler because of that aluminum metal back. And in the case of the Red Magic 6S Pro Transparent Edition, which I've got right here, though that RGB fan looks really awesome, guys, the glass back on the Red Magic 6s pro doesn't actually dissipate heat very well so in this video i'm going to be testing the performance of the red magic 6s pro in an extensive test where i'm going to be testing the benchmark and i'm going to be testing it on one of the most demanding games right now which is kenshin impact so what are we waiting for guys let's get this test started So before I start, just some key specifications of this Red Magic 6S Pro phone. It carries the Snapdragon 888 Plus, which is actually a slightly overclocked version of the standard Snapdragon 888. We all know how hot the Snapdragon 888 runs, so overclocking it even by just a bit will definitely result in hotter temperatures. And the transparent edition that I've got over here has 12 gig of LPDDR5 RAM and 256 GB of UFS 3.1 storage. It actually has one of the highest refresh rates that you can find on the mobile phone right now and that is 165 hertz since this is a 10 cent edition or the chinese version the battery on this phone is actually just 4500 mAh and if you're going to be getting the international model you actually get a bigger battery at 5050 mAh those limited to a slower charging speed of just 66 watts compared to the 120 watts on the chinese version and as you can see here i've got the red magic dual core cooler on the left and the Black Shark Fun Cooler Pro 2 on the right. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be running test first with just the internal fan with no cooler attached and I'll record that data and then I'll test it with these two fans and we'll see if there's going to be a big difference in the results. So let's go ahead and get this test started guys. So we're actually going to be doing a wildlife extreme stress test. It's going to be running 20 times for a total of 20 minutes and it's going to show us the highest loop and the lowest loop as well as the frames per second that you're expecting to get including the stability. So as you can see here, the fan is turned on and if we check on the Nubia Game Center, it's 165 hertz, I'll keep it at that. Turbo fan is on, so performance is set to balance. So let's see if I can go to infinite. From what I can tell, this is actually the highest performance mode that you can get on this phone. And there is a message there saying that after selecting this mode, using higher performance may increase the power consumption and the heat generation, which is something that we're going to be expecting. Now it's set on infinite mode, it's running at its maximum performance. So let's see if this RGB fan can actually handle the heat. Let's set it down. And let's start the first test, which is the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. So starting the test in 3, 2, 1. Alright guys, so the first test is done. Ow! The phone is very hot to the touch. While it's still hot, let's try to measure temperatures at the back. 56.7, 46, and 43. So it's hottest at the top part. It's very, very hot to the touch, guys. And how about the screen? 51, 52, and 45.7 okay so let's see the scores guys so despite the heat the best loop score was 1554 lowest loop 1367 stability was 88 percent which is somewhat to be expected because i did put it in extreme performance mode and stability is going to be affected performance monitoring went down by a lot it lost 20 percent so one percent per minute and the temperature internally it started off at 33 degrees and it ended up at 54 degrees celsius so it's actually pretty hot guys frame rates range from 6 to 12. so now we know how hot the phone will run without any kind of cooler and just relying on the internal fan so of course i'm going to let this phone cool down a bit because it is still pretty warm to the touch so be right back guys 
All right, guys, so the phone is cooled down enough. I'm going to be testing the Red Magic Dual Core Cooler first because this is built to be used with a Red Magic phone. And of course, I'm going to be using a power bank to power the cooler because it's still not advisable to power this cooler by plugging it in directly into the phone. A few moments later. Sorry about that, guys. Finally found a found power bank that works. So it actually turns on by pulling up the two sides apart. So there you see the RGB lights. So the cooler is attached. It is actually making pretty good contact with the Red Magic 6S Pro guys. So unlike the Red Magic 6 Pro where there is a gap on this one, not much of a gap between the back and the cooler. So there is, it is making perfect contact. Let me open it up. So there is actually an option here to connect the dual core cooler. Let's connect it. It is Bluetooth compatible, so you can actually select the Red Magic Dual Core Cooler. And there's an option there to turn it on and off or automatic. I'm going to put it to strong or super strong. I'd suggest keeping it at that setting, guys. So now that it's connected, you can go ahead and launch 3D Mark again. And since we've got a cooler now at the bottom, I can't really put it flat on its back because it's going to be blocking the airflow. So what I'm going to be doing is... So, like I usually do, I'll put these two boxes and I'll put the phone right in the middle. And let's go ahead and run the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. So, starting the test now with the Red Magic Dual Core Cooler in 3, 2, 1. Alright, guys, test is done. Let's see temperatures at the top, 51.2, 44, 39.8, and let's see at the back, 51.3. So a lot cooler when running with a dual core cooler, so it is doing its job. Okay guys, so here are the scores. Best loop score is a bit higher at 1,562 and the lowest loop score is also higher at 1,408. Stability isn't still what I'm expecting it to be, just increased by a bit and stability is at 90.1%. Now the big difference is in the temperature guys. So instead of hitting a very hot 54 degrees Celsius, it actually only went from 30 up to 45 and battery went down from 77% to 54%. And the frame rate still range between 7 frames per second up to 11 fps. So we'll see if the Black Shark Fun Cooler Pro 2 will do a better job of keeping this very hot phone cool. I'll let the phone cool down a bit and then I'll go ahead and run a third test and use the Black Shark Fun Cooler 2 Pro. Alright guys, so the phone has cooled down and I've charged it up a bit because it's getting pretty low on battery. And now I'm going to be running the third test with the Fun Cooler Pro 2. So let me just open it up and let's start the test. So starting the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test in 3, 2, 1. Test is done guys. Let's measure some temps. 53.3 so same at the front and same at the back so kind of surprised with the results guys because historically the black shark fun cooler 2 pro actually outperforms the red magic dual core cooler in most tests but in this case with the red magic 6s pro it actually did a bit worse than the red magic dual core cooler the best loop score is 1560 the lowest loop is 1400 Stability is a bit lower at 89.7%. Uh, we actually hit 90.1 on the dual core cooler. And in terms of the battery, it went from 69 to 46. And temperature wise, it's 28 to 47. So there is a 2 degrees Celsius difference, or it's actually 2 degrees Celsius hotter than the Red Magic dual core cooler.
go ahead and measure some temperatures guys so in the front 45 39 so it does get pretty toasty and if you're using it without the case and it does get warm it does warm your hands a bit Starting the test now. Embrace the ice! Teamwork is dreamwork! Your life is mine! So let's measure some temps. 39.3, 34.3, 32.8. So let's see at the back. 37.4. Alright guys, so before we wrap up this test, here are some graphs of the results that I'm getting. On the 3D Mark benchmark test, the Red Magic Dual Core Cooler performed a lot better than the Black Shark Fun Cooler Pro 2. When it actually came to playing a game like Genshin Impact, the Fun Cooler Pro 2 showed that it had what it takes to keep a chip like the Snapdragon 888 Plus cool under intense gaming. But to be honest guys, the difference is very minimal so it could be 1 or 2 degrees Celsius and an, uh, 1 or 2 frames per second between the Red Magic Dual Core Cooler and the Black Shark Fun Cooler Pro 2. So you won't go wrong with getting either of these two coolers. The Fun Cooler Pro 2 comes with additional rubber clamps, so it actually has more compatibility with different kinds of phones. With the Red Magic Dual Core Cooler, it is actually built specifically for Red Magic phones. And as you can see, it's actually a bit curved because the Red Magic 6 phones that came out actually has a curved back. So this will actually fit perfectly for these phones might not be the case for some other phones that you've got that might have a flat back so let me know in the comment section down below which one of these coolers is the tech that you want to get and if you know any other coolers that you want me to feature in the channel please let me know so with that said i'll end this performance and cooler test with the red magic 6s pro as usual a sub would be massively appreciated please like and subscribe hit that bell icon notification and see you all in my next one